In March this year, Uganda received two consignments of COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine totaling to 964,000 doses from the Salam Institute of India through COVAX facility. Because of the limited doses of the vaccine, government prioritized beneficiary groups considered to be at high risk of contracting the disease, and these include people above 50 years, teachers, health workers, security, and people above 18 years with underlying health conditions. This first phase of the COVID-19 vaccine targets to reach at least 20% of the population, which is approximately 9 million. The World Health Organization has so far approved six COVID-19 vaccines, including AstraZeneca, which Uganda is administering. But what is the efficacy of this AstraZeneca vaccine? This vaccine has been approved for use by the World Health Organization. And there are basically three critical components that they look at before a vaccine is approved for use in a wider population. First of all, is it safe? And what do we mean by safety? That these side effects that will occur, can the people really handle, can they manage these side effects? Then the other critical component they look at is the quality. What processes did they follow when they are producing this vaccine? And then finally, the, what is what's known as the efficacy? Now for the COVID-19 vaccine, they, they put a benchmark. If we can get a product that can prevent disease in at least 50 people out of 100, that is good enough. However, some people are still reluctant to receive the vaccine due to unknown fears. Now, this uh, clotting disease, which has already been, of course, even talked about in some of the media, and also try to rectify, it is a very rare condition. What do we mean by rare? In every one million people, hmm, only four of them who have received the vaccine develop what? That clotting disease. But the good news, it can be treated. One of the questions being asked by the public is that why do some people get infected with COVID-19 even after receiving the vaccine? On this, the experts explain that the aim of the vaccine is not purely to stop infection, but rather to prevent one from getting a severe form of disease. That if I contract the COVID-19 disease now, at least I will not be admitted. I will not go to the, we've heard about the ICU, I will not go to the HDU, I will not go and they start struggling to get a uh, ventilator. As you know what happened in the past, you would have to line up to queue because the beds are already full. That is what these vaccines are trying to prevent. If you're vaccinated, you have lower chances of death and getting severe forms of disease that may result in death compared to a person who is not vaccinated. The controversies surrounding the COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine have instilled fear in the population. Now, the Ministry of Health is considering to withdraw vaccines from districts which are underutilizing them to those where the consumption is high. The low-performing districts are the regions of Karamoja, Acholi, Lango and Bunyoro. It costed us how many months of lockdown and we get this free, precious product that has been a breakthrough to controlling the pandemic and we say we are disposing vaccines due to expiry. We shall not be part of that conversation as a country, and the decision has been made. We have given the districts three days. Sending out, I mean, so health is sending out an official communication um, to all the districts, to the district leaders, to the technical leaders, to really, if we are sure they will not utilize the vaccines. Recall, there are some other districts, some other people who are willing to do it, to use the vaccine. According to the National Vaccine Deployment Plan developed by the Ministry of Health, the target is to vaccinate 22 million people by 2022, which is 49.8% of the population. This first phase of the vaccination targets 9 million people and so far 527,917 have received the first dose or both. Sandra Kahonde, Adia Nakuti, UBC News.